Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and today I'm making a video that is close to my heart and I'm finally starting this series and I'm talking about dementia in literature. Today I'm just doing an introductory video so I'm gonna talk a bit more about like dementia and Alzheimer's disease and why this is relevant in literature and why I am uh, personally so interested in this subject. So the reason I personally am interested in dementia is because when I was probably about 10 years old, um, my grandma uh, died of Alzheimer's disease. I might have been a bit younger, but this was just, I don't know, this really stuck with me. Um, I really loved my grandma. She was a wonderful person. She's um, beloved by everybody in the family. She was she was just a lovely human being. And yeah, she started to, to forget everything and um, be confused and, and it was Alzheimer's disease. And that was at a time when like people knew even less about the disease than now. So um, yeah, it was just really hard to, to deal with that for, for my family, for my grandpa who, who died less than a year after because he probably lost his will to live after. So it's just a personal topic in that sense. And I dealt with this topic again later in my life in an academic way because I wanted to, to approach it in a different way as well. And what I did was I wrote my bachelor thesis on dementia in literature because um, if, you, uh, if you've watched some of my videos, I've mentioned this before, I studied English and German literature and so I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in English literature and yeah, I wrote my bachelor thesis on dementia and literature in particular and I th still think this is a really interesting subject that I want to explore more and I thought that I could do a video series on it. Now obviously I'm aware that um, this is a topic that not only affected me and my family, but that affects a lot of people. So if you have somebody in your life who, who struggles with dementia or uh, lost somebody to, to the disease and you don't feel like watching these videos, please just skip over them. If like they trigger you or make you upset, then you shouldn't be watching these. Um, but if you're interested in this series, I would uh, love your feedback. And uh, if you have any books in particular or stories or anything that you think I should talk about, uh, let me know. I have a lot of text available to me right now that I already have and that I'm going to make videos on. But um, I think I'm going to want to do this series for a long time. So um, eventually I will look for more books. So if you have ideas, um, feel free to, to let me know. And I'm going to talk about not only novels, but also nonfiction, uh, short stories, essays, anything that deals uh, with dementia. I might also do movies at some point. There are obviously uh, books dealing with dementia or novels dealing with dementia that have been turned into movies, but there are also movies that are independently dealing with dementia. For example, The Iron Lady, the f film about Margaret Thatcher deals with that. I'm not a Margaret Thatcher f fan by any means, but it's an interesting uh, movie and uh, yeah, so I might look at those eventually too, but I think for now I'm gonna stick with like printed things. So yeah, I want to start out with um, some facts on dementia and Alzheimer's disease and I <laughs> first I'm gonna just give you some numbers and I know that probably the majority of people watching are from the US. So currently in the US there are 5.8 million US Americans that are um, that suffer from Alzheimer's disease and the projection is that in 2050 it will be nearly 14 million so a lot more. And obviously that is because, especially in, in Western society, but I think also in Japan and some other countries, people get older and older because medicine is more advanced. But that also means that people are more likely to, to suffer from diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's disease as they age. Uh, internationally, there are right now 46.8 million people that suffer from Alzheimer's disease. And the projection for 2050 is 131.5 million. So a lot of people. And in Germany, just by the by, because I'm from Germany, 
uh, currently 1.2 million people are suffering from the disease. And one of three seniors in the US dies with Alzheimer's disease or another form of dementia. So obviously this is a big deal, right? This is an important subject that a lot of people will throughout their life come into contact with either because they themselves contract the disease or because somebody that they love does. So it's just it's just an important topic um, that, that a lot of people have to deal with. And um, before I get more into why I think literature or what, what I think literature brings to that, I wanted to um, make a distinction between dementia and Alzheimer's disease because I've so far been throwing around both of these words and you see them at the same time a lot of the time, but they actually have somewhat of a different meaning. So Alzheimer's disease is just what it says, it's a specific disease, whereas dementia is not really a disease in its own right, it is rather a group of symptoms and those symptoms may include uh, problems with memory, problems with thinking, problems with problem solving, language and perception. So dementia is really an umbrella term for any kind of disease uh, that, that is like Alzheimer's disease, um, but also other ones that I'm going to mention. So with Alzheimer's disease, what happens on a physical level is that it's a physical disease that affects the brain. So there's these so-called plaques or tangles that build up in the brain and they disrupt nerve cells and prevent those nerve cells from communicating with each other and working properly. And because of that, cells die or the connections between the cells, the synapses, are getting blocked. And so far, unfortunately, there is no cure. And 65% of dementia is actually um, caused by Alzheimer's disease. But there are, of course, other forms as well. So these other forms include vascular dementia. And vascular dementia is basically caused by a lack of oxygen to the brain. So this might be caused by a stroke or a series of mini strokes. There's also what is called mixed dementia, which is pretty much what it says. It's when you have different types of dementia. So more than one of the uh, diseases I'm mentioning. There's also dementia with Lewy bodies. And Lewy bodies are basically abnormal structures that again form in the brain and destroy nerve cells. So um, something all of these have in common is the destruction of nerve cells, which is ha what is happening on a physical level and is causing these uh, issues with memory and um, like thought processes. And then the final one that I wanted to mention is frontotemporal dementia. And this, again, has clumps of abnormal protein that form in the front and the side of the brain and, again, cause the death of nerve cells. So Alois Alzheimer was the one who first described the Alzheimer's disease and he described it first in 1906. So we know of this disease for more than 100 years by now. But unfortunately, as I said, there's still no cure. So yeah, science is still working on that um, and we obviously uh, continue to have to, to deal with this disease nonetheless. Now, as I said, we have an aging population and so this obviously is an important issue. Now, one way that you can look at dementia is, of course, from the perspective of somebody who is suffering from the disease. And I will look at memoirs as well in this video series. So I do own two memoirs. One is called Losing My Mind, an intimate look at life with Alzheimer's by Thomas de Baggio. And he suffered from dementia disease. I don't know if he is still alive. This was um, published in let me check. So this was published in 2002, so 17 years ago. So I'm not sure if Thomas de Baggio is actually still alive. Uh, once I get to this book, I obviously will check that out. And another one that is more recent, that was published in 2018, is Somebody I Used to Know by Wendy Mitchell. So these books will show up again. And obviously memoirs are important. That is a first-hand account of a dementia, and we need to take that into account. But the thing with memoirs is, because of the nature of dementia, you're only up to a certain point in your life 
have the capability to chronicle the disease and your experiences with the disease because as the disease progresses you lose more and more of your memories and you also lose more and more of your capabilities of like writing a narrative and writing a story because memory is one aspect that is needed to to create a coherent story and to um, the sense of time in past, present and future, um, those are things that are necessary for that and those are things that are lost in the disease. So fiction offers us the opportunity to look at later stages of dementia as well, uh, which memoirs unfortunately cannot. And uh, in that sense, I think uh, fictional accounts are, I would say, equally important. And of course you can argue otherwise as well if you want to. But I still don't think we should uh, dismiss fiction just because it's not uh, a first-hand experience. One of the strengths that literature brings is of course that we can experience something and look through the eyes of a person that we otherwise couldn't see through and experience things that we otherwise couldn't or get to know things. And of course people that either have first-hand or second-hand experience with dementia can do this in another way without fiction as well. But for those who don't have those experiences, fiction offers a great insight into what it's like to deal with dementia, what it's like to have dementia. And so I think that is something that fiction brings to the table. And then I also want to talk about how dementia ties in with our particularly Western understanding of identity and how it can be problematic to just use this concept of identity when looking at it. So for once, um, people with dementia are in society excluded twice, if you will. So for once you have age, which is not really a binary, like gender is traditionally perceived as a binary between male and female. And of course, there's a lot of like different categories between that, but like traditionally this would be considered the binary or like heterosexual versus homosexual. And of course, again, there's different categories and you shouldn't like just put it in a binary, but like traditionally this is done and then you have a hierarchy. And with age, obviously it's a continuum, but you could still argue that young and fit is the idealized version of the spectrum of the binary, whereas old is the one that, apart from the association of wisdom, is looked down on or is disadvantaged in society. And then if you add to that disability, which dementia, dementia is, because um, you obviously uh, are not fully functioning on a mental level anymore, then you have um, two identity categories where you are disadvantaged. So uh, this is one thing to, to um, keep in mind with dementia, I think. And then the other is that our concepts of identity are very, very closely tied to our memory. So our sense of self is strongly dependent on remembering our past, according to um, Daniel Schachter's book, Searching for Memory. And there's this well-known concept of man as a storytelling animal. So we tell stories and by telling stories, we create our identity, we construct our identity. I mean, if you think about it, things that happen in your life, they just are a series of events that just happen chronologically. But when you look back on them, you turn them into a narrative, you say, oh, this happened and this is what brought me there. So you're constructing a story that you tell and that is your life then in its turn. And that is what makes us human in a way. But this is also a risky way of looking at identity because with dementia you lose this capability. You lose your memories or you lose a lot of your memories. So you're losing a lot of past. So does that mean you lose personhood? Because then you have the risk of excluding people with dementia from personhood. And this obviously doesn't just account for people with dementia but with other mental disabilities as well. And then you also have Western values that a strong emphasis is put on, such as individualism and independence. And again, if you lose a lot of your memories, you lose a lot of those things that are considered to make you that individual. And obviously, the farther the disease progresses, the less independent you are. You are dependent on others, helping you, checking up on you, making sure you're okay. So 
but these are just things that um, to, to keep in mind when, when talking about dementia and um, the way we look at dementia and also um, the way we look at identity. And in my next video I'm gonna talk about um, Still Alice by Lisa Genova and that will be in June so I'm gonna make this a monthly series so one, one video per month. I think this novel shows an alternative concept of identity potentially and I'm gonna talk about uh, that uh, in more detail when I get to that video but basically um, there's this idea of looking at identity as relational and not just as tied with like our cognitive abilities so relational in the sense of your connections to other humans and of course you can again argue that because you're losing memories that your relations to the people that are close to you will change because at some point the person with dementia is no longer going to recognize their own family members or not know who they are but at the same time you still have a relational aspect because you are dependent on other people so you are still connected and this is part of what makes an identity as well you could argue so i think literature offers different ways of looking at identity and different ways of looking at a still meaningful life even with dementia and looking beyond the values of rationality and productivity that are valued so high in western culture. So I'm gonna look um, a little bit more at that in my next video when it comes to, to Still Alice. I do have other books I want to talk about, I'm not gonna mention all of them here but uh, as I said I will look at memoirs as well I will also, um, I've mentioned this book before in another video, I'll look at a graphic novel that I think is amazing and that's Paco Roca. Uh, the English title is Wrinkles, but this has been translated from the Spanish and the Spanish title is Arrugas and I hope I, sorry I'm not very good with rolling the R in Spanish, terrible with that. But uh, I think this is a wonderful um, uh, book and I will um, talk about that uh, at some point. And then of course you can also have dementia as a narrative device. So for example um, I'm gonna talk at some point about Small World by Martin Suter and this is about the protagonist Conrad who suffers from Alzheimer's disease and as he loses his memories that are closer to the present his childhood memories keep coming back up and truths come out so it's sort of like um, I think I haven't read this but I think it could be classified sort of in the crime fiction thriller aspect so uh, this uh, is also obviously a way to, to deal with dementia in literature again I'm also going to look at uh, short stories uh, I'm going to look at essays and maybe movies and if you think you have a text that in some way deals with dementia and that would be great for this video series, please do leave your suggestions uh, down below. I'm really interested to, to find more books and uh, fiction and non-fiction and otherwise. So yeah, anything you have I would be curious to know. I hope you liked this video. I know it was less focused on literature than usual, but I wanted to do like an introduction to, to get you into the topic and... and give some more information on the disease before talking about it in literature. I just think that's helpful and necessary. And yeah, I'm really hoping you're gonna enjoy this series and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and bye guys!